Hello everyone, welcome to the new video. So today we'll be going through this paper which is titled as Deep Walk, Online Learning of Social Representations. This came out from Stony Brook University in the year of 2014. So this paper is one of the early foundational works that looked into how to apply deep learning based approaches for networks. So at very high level, this paper essentially introduces a novel approach of learning a dense vector representation for a given node in a network using certain feature learning based approaches that are very prominent and have proven to work in the field of NLP. Okay, now let's dive in and see the paper. We present DeepWalk, a novel approach for learning latent representation of vertices in a network. These latent representation encode social relation in a continuous vector space, which is easily exploited by statistical models. Recent advances in language modeling and unsupervised feature learning from sequence of words to graph. Okay, so what they are saying is that we propose a system, deep walk, let's call it DW for now, that takes in a network N that has I nodes and J edges. Once this goes through the black box of deep walk, you get a dense representation in some D dimension for each of the node I. So as we know, like graph are usually stored in adjacency matrix. So what is the adjacency matrix? Let's say you have N nodes, so you create a matrix that is n cross n and for each node you one hot encode the neighboring vertices so for example if you have a graph let's say this one so this becomes a 3 cross 3 matrix so for one as you can see it's connected with 2 and 3 so you have 2 and 3 as 1 over here and rest everything remains 0 since we don't have self loop that's why all the diagonal elements will be 0 for 2 it's only connected to 1 so it goes like this and rest everything is 0 and similarly for 3, it becomes 1, 0, 0. So this is the adjacency matrix, which is one of the ways of representing graphs. So here if you see, as n increases, the dimensionality of each of the node will increase in a sparse way. So the paper introduces a technique of encoding matrices and converting them into some n cross d representation. So for each of the node, you'll be having some d dimension dense representation that represents that node. Okay, deep walk uses the local information obtained from truncated random walks to learn latent representation by treating random walks equivalent to sentences. Let's take an example. Let's consider a graph this. And let's label all the node numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Considering this to be your starting point, the next node that you jump to is selected uniformly at random. So let's say you start from 1, you go to 2. From there, you just have one way of coming back again. So again, come to one, and then you come to three. Let's consider we are generating random walks of length four. So this is one of the sequence that we generate if we start from node one. Similarly, if you again simulate a random walk from node one, you might be getting one, three, five, three. There are n number of sequences of length L that you can get if you start from any node in the graph. So what they are saying is this is equivalent to a sentence how it's represented in a language. So let's say you have a sentence S that has four words, which is again nothing but a linear chain of graph that you create. So each of them have a temporal nature and kind of go forward as you progress to a time. Similar is the case with the walks that they have generated. So considering this sample, this becomes one, three, five, three. So this is essentially the same thing what they meant by treating walks equivalent to sentences. Then they talk about demonstrating that latent representation on several multi-label network classification tasks on social networks such as blog, catalog, Flickr, and YouTube. Okay, let's move forward. Learn social representation of graph vertices by modeling the stream of short random walks. So this is exactly the same thing that we saw. So then they mention about what exactly do they mean by social representations. So which are latent features of vertices that capture neighborhood similarity and community membership. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say you have a graph G, which is represented in this format. So it clearly shows you have like two clusters. One is this one, another is this, and this acts as a bridge. So if you want to learn a node representation for this node, let's say, and you simulate n random walks of l length so chances are pretty high most of the nodes that you get in that random walk will be within this cluster itself 
because as you hop to this node you'll be having one by three chances of getting to the bridge whereby two by three of remaining in the same cluster so with this some notion of community membership is already getting incorporated in that random box that you generate and so will be reflected when you get a dense vector representation for the same and about neighborhood similarity if you start from this node the next node that you select at random would be either this or this so each of them would be selected as a second node almost equal number of times if you generate large number of random walks from this point deep walk takes a graph as an input and produces a latent representation as the output the result of applying a method to the well studied karate network is shown in the figure okay so let's see what this karate graph talks about so zakari's karate club is a very popular network example that people often cite when talking about community structure in network so it's a story of a karate club that divided into two sub communities because of some dispute between the teachers here if we see they have bifurcated it further into four clusters so what authors propose this graph goes as an input to their deep walk model and outputs a embedding for each node which is essentially each member of the karate club in a r2 space so which you can see over here so if you notice the two dimensional representation of each node what model has learned kind of represent what was there in the original network so here also you can see like four communities in place not only that it also captures a sense of nearness so here if you can see 7 and 5 are close to each other so 7 and 5 again are close to each other in this space as well compared to 7 and 25 let's say which was farther apart in the original network as well also we can see in this space as well each node is a part of the similar cluster which was there before in the network architecture now let's move on to the exact algorithm okay but before that authors also see a connection of power laws that happen in network architecture as well as in language models so what they say is we observe that the frequency with which vertices appear in the short random walks follow a power law distribution word frequency in natural language follows a similar distribution and techniques from language modeling account for this distributional behavior so they talk about figure 2 that shows first is the short random walk scale free graph and the second comes from the text of 1 lakh articles from english wikipedia okay so this is the graph that they are mentioning so as you can see in the first graph the y axis shows the number of vertices whereas the x axis shows the frequency with which that vertex occur in that short random walks so this clearly shows there are very large number of vertices that occur very less and there are very low number of vertices that occur very frequently in the short random walks similar is the behavior that they saw in languages so for wikipedia article text they have again plotted y axis as the number of words and x axis as how many times the word occurs and this clearly shows very low number of words occur too many times in the corpora whereas very high number of words occur very less so example of this you can think of as stop words so these are small set of words that are used very frequently in the language which is again this segment that i was talking about whereas there are many normal words that don't occur that much in the case of networks you can think of nearby nodes that get visited pretty frequently compared to the nodes that are very far so yeah this was a pretty cool result that they found so that confirms to the idea of what they are proposing which is of using language modeling techniques to model the networks as well okay so now let's see the algorithm so before we start with understanding the algorithm let's build a side by side analogy to understand how things would happen in the nlp domain and in the network domain so for training any language model you would be needing a corpora which will be having let's say dn documents considering a document to be a sentence then you would be requiring a vocabulary v which is nothing but the smallest lexical unit for which you want to learn the representation mostly its words coming to the network side the corpora again here is d1 to dn now here each d is a random walk that is sampled from the graph which is equivalent to sentences in the language and here again you would require vocabulary v which are nodes in a graph because essentially you will be traversing your random walk over the nodes so with this analogy in mind let's read the algorithm so the input to the deep walk algorithm would be the graph g which is composed of v vertices and e number of edges w is the window size so window is nothing but a context to its left and right 
So for example, if you have a random walk of five nodes, let's say one, two, three, four, five. And if you are at any point three and you have a window length of one, let's say, so you'll be peaking one to its right and one to its left. So you have a total element, which is two times window length plus one. So this is what is meant by window size. Then you have D, which is the embedding representation. So this is the size of that latent vector that you would want to represent for each of the node in the graph. Then you have gamma, which is nothing but walks per vertex. So authors have defined the notion of running multiple walks from the same starting point, which in language domain is equivalent to generating sentences with the same starting word. And lastly, it takes in a parameter T, which defines the walk length, which in language domain is equivalent to the length of the sentence. With these inputs to our model, the output that we expect is a matrix that is of V cross D dimension, where V is all the vertices in the graph and D is the length of the latent dimension. Now, if we concentrate on this loop, the first loop essentially talks about doing a full pass over the entire graph and that too, we do that gamma number of times. Then we change our orientation a bit just to make sure we start with different starting point. Then we traverse through all the vertices in that graph and we generate a walk of length T and we name it WVI. And finally, this walk goes to the skip ground function. And we again go through this process. Now let's understand the definition of skip ground. So around the year of 2013 and 2014, Mikulov came up with the paper with the idea of what to wake. So what to wake was the algorithm that talked about learning a latent dense representation of every word in the language that captured the semantic similarity of two words in some latent space if they have similar context. So to get going with that idea, he came up with two algorithms. One was SIBO, which is continuous bag of words. Other was SkipGram. So in this paper, authors have used SkipGram to learn vector representation of each of the node in the random walk. So let's understand SkipGram. Consider you have a sentence S, which is this one. And you want to find the embedding for the word over. And let's say you have a window length of two, which means you'll be seeing two words to its left and two words to its right. So this is essentially your full context. So SkipGram says, given this word, which is over, I would want to predict all of its neighbor that occur in that window, which would mean given the word over, you would like to predict all, you would like to predict the, you would like to predict iterate and as well as V, which means these are your input and output pairs that would go to the neural network. To start with, we represent each of the word in a one hot encoded format. So you would have an input over, which is nothing but one cross V, where we use the vocabulary size. This goes through a hidden layer and then to the output layer, where you will be applying softmax over the full vocabulary size. So for this case of over and all, over acts as an input and at the output, you will be predicting the location of the word all wherever it occurs in that vocabulary. So if you see, the input is one cross V, output is again one cross V, so these weights are the embedding matrix that we'll be learning and checkpointing and using later as and when required. So this is V cross D, where D is the length of the latent dimension and the output matrix would be D cross V. So if you multiply both of these, you'll be getting a one cross D representation, which again multiplied by D cross V gives you one cross V, where V is the length of the vocabulary because we'll have to choose one of the words from the vocabulary that occurs in the context. So yeah. This is the full idea behind skip gram. Now, if we see the algorithm, they have done exactly the same thing. For each of the word in the random walk, you calculate the left context and the right context. Then you iterate over all the context words, which become your output and input pair. And you would want to maximize this posterior probability, where phi is the embedding matrix that you are trying to learn. So this becomes your loss. Then you do the gradient step. Then you repeat the process. So this is the full idea of how skip ground works. But there is one small computationally intensive step if you might have noticed that. So at the output end, since we are predicting one word at a time, so this is a full softmax over the vocabulary. So if you remember the formula of softmax, the denominator is a summation over all the vocabulary, which can be very expensive if your vocabulary is too large. So to cope up with that, Mikulov proposed the idea of doing a hierarchical softmax. So let's see what that is. So hierarchical softmax is nothing but an approximation to the softmax. So in this, we assign the vertices to the leaves of a binary tree. The prediction problem turns into maximizing the probability of a specific path in the tree. 
if the path has the vertex uk so if you can recall u is the notation that we use for the context word which is identified by a sequence of tree nodes this where b0 is the root and b log of v is nothing but the final context word that you would want to predict from any center word okay so instead of doing a softmax over entire vocabulary, we convert the problem of maximizing the probability of a specific path in a tree. So we first arrange all of our vocabulary in the form of a binary tree. So binary tree, which means at every given node, you will be having two childs. So after you have arranged it that format and the leaves are at the leaf level, we start at root level. We traverse through the path down the tree so that we maximize the probability of reaching to the context node. So this is exactly what is written over here. So this was the initial softmax thing. So this can be approximated as you find the probability of each of the intermediate node and you multiply so that you get the probability of the entire path from root node to the leaf node. So this could be modeled as a binary classification problem. So now at every step at the intermediate node, you're doing a logistic classification where a value of zero and one could mean going to its left or to its right. Let's see the diagram. Yeah, so here V1 is nothing but the input word for which we are trying to learn the representation. This is the matrix that we are trying to learn. So after passing through the first layer, instead of doing a softmax, you do a logistic for the root node. It helps you decide whether to go to its left or to its right. And similarly, you keep on doing logistic till you reach the word that you wanted to predict. Let's say V5 in this case. So here V1 to V8 are all the vocabulary words which are arranged at the leaf level. So a model essentially tries to optimize and learn this path. So this was the full idea behind hierarchical softmax. So yeah, I guess we are done with the paper. Then they have this experiment section. So yeah, it was a really a good paper to read. And it was really interesting to see how concepts from different domains, more specifically NLP in this case, are incorporated in estimating the node vectors in the graph and how random walks are an approximation to sentences in the language and the power law comparison that the authors did. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Since I have read the recent advances in this domain as well, which are possible extensions to this work and clearly tackle the limitations that are proposed in this paper. So I'll not be discussing about them in this video. Instead, I have a plan of series coming up that talks about doing machine learning with graphs and the papers related to that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for more interesting content. So that's it for this video. Thank you.